Hello, everyone. Welcome to our lightning talk, facilitating an open and affordable course content publishing internship. My name is Mandy Goodset, and I am the uh, Performing Arts and Humanities Librarian and the Open Educational Resource and Copyright Advisor at Cleveland State University. And I'm Barb Loomis, the Digital Scholarly Publications Administrator at Cleveland State University. And I'm Jameson Oakley, a creative writing student and graduate assistant at Kent State University. So first, just a little context about our, our publishing program, our affordability program, before we get into talking about the internship. Uh, so the Michael Schwartz Library at CSU has been offering textbook affordability grants since 2016, every fall and spring semester. And our publishing program really supports the recipients of those grants who are adapting material or authoring openly licensed material. And most of that work is really done kind of on the side by myself and Barb. So this is not our full-time job and there's so much to do. Um, we decided in fall of 2021 that it might be helpful to us to recruit an intern to work on some of our publishing projects with us. So we are very fortunate um, at CSU. We have a wonderful poetry center that does a lot of publishing on it, uh, of its own. We have the Northeast Ohio MFA program and the English department, and all of them were willing to work with us to try to find some students interested in publishing experience who might be able to serve as interns for us. So uh, we put out a call for interns, we put out a job description, and we were really fortunate that Jameson applied for the job. Um, we were really um, impressed by his application materials, and he agreed to start in spring of 2022. So why might someone be interested in starting an OER publishing internship? First of all, experience with publishing can be really valuable for a student who's interested in publishing and or librarianship. It gives them hands-on experience actually working with that publishing process. Um, it also can raise awareness for that in turn of the whole world of open education. And we were fortunate, um, Jameson is a teacher also. And so he learned a lot about the existence of open educational resources that he could actually use in his teaching. And finally, of course, it can really help you in your own publishing efforts because it, it gives you another person to kind of um, help with projects and move things forward more quickly. So now I'll turn it over to Jameson to talk a little bit about his experience with the internship. Yeah, so um, this internship is completely remote. It's unpaid, um, but I found this to be a viable option because of its flexibility. So in other words, I was given the option to tailor the internship based on my own interests and experiences and basically just what I wanted to get out of it the most. So as a college writing instructor, um, I'm just starting out. And so learning about affordable learning and open educational resources, it's only adding to my teaching toolbox and uh, will certainly benefit my future students. And overall, this is what attracted me to this internship. Um, so the panel event we put together, Let's Talk Open Textbooks, author Q&A. Uh, we were fortunate to have had four different panelists to talk about each of their experiences with developing open textbooks. Um, I got to play a key role in the panel by asking each author about their specific experience and in turn was able to learn about various ways of developing these open textbooks and or resources, whether it be starting from scratch, um, or adding one's own flair to a previous open textbook, um, and especially learning about the different uh, ways that the peer review process may be done. Um, I remember there was one panelist who talked about working with their students to um, you know, tailor their textbook to what their students' needs and wants uh, were. Uh, so I found it to be very valuable hearing each of them talk. I learned so much just from that panel event alone. Um, some other projects that um, really are kind of the larger things that I've done just in one semester's time. So I started out by reading a bunch about what affordable learning is, what open textbooks are. Um, I learned from the get-go uh, about Cleveland State's grant program and uh, the history of open textbooks, um, how they have, you know, became what they are today. And um, you know, a lot of emphasis was on learning the differences between copyrights, especially what Creative Commons licenses are, 
And uh, yeah, so just a lot of reading, a lot of quizzing myself, really trying to learn this material. Um, and then when I got to a good place learning about the different technology that does the publishing for these textbooks, uh, such as Pressbooks, which is what CSU's library uses to, primary public, to primarily publish these open textbooks, um, Barb was able to teach me one-on-one um, -on -one, um, what that workflow is like working in Pressbooks. So that was really valuable training to me. Um, and currently I am working on finding openly licensed images for a professor um, for an upcoming open textbook. And um, that project is still ongoing, but um, I'm learning so much from that as well. So, yeah. And Thanks, Jameson. Um, for students wanting some publishing experience, understand your motivation for wanting to engage in this experience. For example, our intern Jameson wanted to expand his teaching toolbox and better understand publishing when making choices in the classroom. Whether it's a paid or unpaid internship, you will find it invaluable working with open and affordable course content publishing staff. When applying, tell them your strengths and describe areas where you need guidance or experience. Depending on the institution, what you bring to the table may help shape your internship experience. If you hesitate to apply to a non-paying internship, remember that your experience will gain, you gain, will become a stepping stone to your career path. Also, you may be able to use these mentors as references for a future job, not something you can buy. Next slide, please. If you're the organizer, consider doing it. It's not overwhelming. Uh, it's not an overwhelming amount of work and it's very rewarding. Although we started in the middle of the semester, we advise that you start at the beginning of the academic year so the intern has more time in the program. Make it very student directed and ask where they are interested in gaining experience. Provide some options, but let them choose. This will keep the program flexible and give you a chance to make it grow in ways you didn't expect. Consider a remote internship position. It allows for flexibility even beyond the student body at your own institution. As Jameson mentioned, he worked remotely the entire time and it couldn't have worked out better. We had weekly Zoom sessions to keep us on track and used email if any follow-ups were needed. During the application process, ask for a cover letter, which will help you to learn more about the applicant upfront. Give the student helpful experience in applying for jobs and help the student understand if they are truly interested. Rather than receiving hundreds of applications from students who just want any job, you'll most likely receive a few thoughtful cover letters from students who are very interested in a job that will help them in their career. When Jamison sent his cover letter, his enthusiasm for wanting to work with us was very clear, and both Mandy and I couldn't wait to meet him to learn more. Thankfully, we hired him, and he helped us have a successful internship program that we would like to continue in the fall. Thanks for your time and attention. Please contact us if you have any questions.